18th, 2024 at 7 p.m. at the Council Chambers, uh, City Hall, 1800 Space Park Drive, Suite 200 in Nassau Bay, Texas. The meeting has been called to order. Roll call shows all members, all council is uh, is participating. And we move to the uh, to the invocation. I'd like to do the invocation first. And this is Pastor Miller from the from the Baptist Church. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here. My wife and I, for the last uh, about 16 years, lived in a, one of the last communist countries in the world under the scrutiny and tyranny of that, that country and that government. This would never happen. Yeah. You know? And so thank you for recognizing and acknowledging God when you start your business. Our great God and Father, we are thankful for the opportunity that we have to, to live in a land that is free. The land where we can do what we're doing now, that is talk to you, our creator the creator of heaven and earth. Father, I pray for these men and women who will do business here tonight. Thank you, Father, that you have ordained government. Thank you, Father, that these men and women have been assigned the task of, of providing laws and providing legislation and providing leadership that will bring peace, that will provide order to a community of people. And thank you, Father, that even things are done here that would even provide and help to punish those who would do evil. <coughs> And Father, we thank you for your protection over Nassau Bay. Thank you for these men and women. We pray for their protection of their families. Thank you for the sacrifice that they make in order to serve in this community. And Father, we pray for the citizens of Nassau Bay, that you would watch over them, that you would protect them. We pray for the businesses that are here, that you would watch over them. Thank you for our first responders that serve so faithfully, the police, the fire, and others. And Father, we pray you would watch over them and meet their needs and provide for them. Father, we thank you for this privilege, and we ask for wisdom and guidance and leadership <clears throat> that comes from on high. That, Father, as they do business, that they would do business knowing that there is a God watching over us. And, Father, may you be glorified in all that's done here. May you be honored. And, Father, I pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. It's in his name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Bob. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. James, Joyce, if y'all would please come up here. And anybody else in the family <coughs> I don't recognize my son. <laughs> but I apologize for that. Please come up. And I and I, I want to say a couple of things. Uh, we have a proclamation for the uh, Abbey family, uh, I guess the patriarch of the family. Uh, uh, George Abbey. Um, it is one which I'm kind of very honored to do, and I hope I can get through it because some of it is so pretty, pretty, uh, pretty important as well as uh, emotional for, for the things that he's that he's done. Um, so bear with me with that, and uh, um, I really uh, just want to give uh, the family, the sorrows of the whole city for uh, for the passing of, of uh, your, your your father and. Uh, uh, and the, for the rest of the family. So I, I have a proclamation here. Whereas the city of Nassau Bay takes great pride in recognizing those individuals whose commitment and dedication have made a lasting and unique impact in our community, nation, and its citizens. George W. S. Abbey, Sr. A longtime resident of Nassau Bay passed away March 24, 2024, due to an illness at the age of 91. George Abbey, a Naval Academy graduate and U.S. Air Force pilot with more than 4,000 hours in various types of aircraft, was assigned to NASA's Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston in late 1964, moving to the new community of Nassau Bay. And whereas George made many major contributions to the Apollo program before, before moving into leadership at the Johnson Space Center, 
He was with the Apollo 1 astronauts the night before the fatal fire of January 20, January 1967. He was in mission control the night of the Apollo 13 accident and organized the recovery effort. And whereas beginning in 1976, George served as Johnson Space Center's Director of Flight Operations, leading the selection of America's first shuttle astronauts from 1978 to 1987 bringing diversity to the astronaut corps with the first minority and female astronauts being selected. He oversaw the triumphant first shuttle missions due to the tragic Challenger accident. And whereas George transferred to NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., where he served in key roles in human space flight in 1987, also working on the synthesis group, charting future paths for American space programs, <laughs> And where in 1991, George became the Senior Director for Civil Space Policy for the National Space Center, working under then Vice President Dan Quayle. Under his leadership, the Council began investigating cooperation with Russia in human space flight after the fall of the Soviet Union that same year. And whereas George was named as the Special Assistant to the NASA Administrator in 1992, he returned to the Johnson Space Center in 1994 first as a deputy director, then as its seventh director. Under his leadership, the Johnson Space Center became the lead center for the space station, space shuttle, and he had greater responsibility for America's human spaceflight programs. And whereas during his time in this role, the space shuttle flew more than 25 successful missions, the joint U.S. and Russian shuttle Mir program was completed providing important information for long duration space flight, and he led the development and launch of the International Space Center. And whereas during his time as director, George signed agreements with the Clear Creek Independent School District to donate land for the Space Center in immediate, and Walt, and Walt Disney donating 123 acre site at the entrance to the Johnson Space Center to become its, its official visitor center of the Space Center Houston. And whereas Johnson Space Center Director George, as Johnson Space Center Director, George opened the center to the community and industry, hosting an annual open house in the balloon or lift off, uh, hot air balloon festival, which brought over 45,000 visitors <coughs> to see the work done on the site. He also hosted Inspection Day, where his industry was invited to see technology being developed by the center. He hosted the Texas Independence Trail Ride, overnight as they traveled to Houston Livestock and Rodeo, and whereas George also launched the Longhorn Project, giving local students the opportunity to learn about animal husbandry, aquaculture, and fruit and vegetable cultivation. The project cemented relationships with the local school districts, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, and their Go Texan Committee and the Texan Longhorn Breeders Association. And whereas after retirement from NASA, George became a space fellow, space fellow at the James A. Baker Institute for Public Policy at Rice University, where he wrote International Space Policy and held International Space Summit. And whereas home to one of only three Saturn V rockets on display in the world, the NASA Johnson Space Center honored him by naming the facility the George W. S. Addy Rocket Park. The Apollo rocket house there is the only one comprised of all flight certified hardware capable of entering orbit around the moon. Outside, additional artifacts from this early human space flight program are on display. George W.S. Abbey Rocket Park allows dreamers and space flight enthusiasts to stand behind history as a place of wonder for visitors from all over the world. And whereas George served as the president of the board of the Odyssey Academy, Chairman of the Board of the Foundation for the International Space Education, board member of the Ad Astra Rocket Company, and fellow and senior fellow at the Institute of the International Space Commerce. He served on the, the uh, RNA, or our NASA Board of Advisors, was an ex officio director, lifetime member, and cast scramble sponsor at the Houston Livestock Radio Show. Trustee of the Museum of Flight in Seattle, Washington, as well as served on the other aerospace board. <laughs> and whereas George honors and awards include the NASA Exceptional Service Medal, the NASA Standing Leadership Medal, 
three NASA Distinguished Service Medals and the 1970 Presidential Medal of Freedom presented by President Richard Nixon for his distinguished civil service in peacetime. He was the recipient of the Rotary National Award for Space Achievement, National Space Trophy in 1997. And whereas in 1998, Judge was awarded the Robert R. Gilruth Award in recognition of his accomplishments and the dedication to human spaceflight, was selected as distinguished alumnus of the U.S. Air Force Institute of Technology, was named Outstanding Russian American of the Year, was inducted into the Texas Aviation Hall of Fame, and whereas George's children were raised in the city of Nassau Bay with four to five continuing to make it their home. Now, therefore, I, Bill Johnson, mayor of this great city of Nassau Bay, on behalf of the Nassau Bay City Council, Nassau Bay City staff, and the citizens of Nassau Bay, hereby express our felt appreciation to George W. S. Abbey Sr. for his over 60 years of service to our nation in human spaceflight. I am honored to present this proclamation that will establish each and every August 21st as George W. S. Abbey Sr. Given under my enemy's office, the 15th of June. Okay. <clears throat> he will be sorely missed. Um, next on the agenda is the citizens' comments, the public hearing. Uh, please note that uh, come and speak. You have three minutes. Paul's the timekeeper. And uh, is there anybody who would like to speak? Royce? Good luck to you. Royce Walker, 27. Excuse me. Royce Walker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Now you can hear me. I just have to use my teacher voice. Uh, 2725 Lighthouse Drive. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I just wanted to uh, personally thank everyone who came out and volunteered for Beautification Day. We had a beautiful day and a very successful day and planted plants at each of our five gardens. I recognize some of you, even if you don't have dirt on or a turquoise shirt. Uh, we planted our gardens in the entrance to Mount Harbor and we thank the city for supplying our plants this year again. I also wanted to invite you to the dedication and celebration of life for Ann Gay. She is a long time Nassau Bay resident and garden club member. Uh, we lost her this last year and at 11 o'clock at Tranquility Arbor at Howard Ward um, on May 4th, we're going to dedicate the fountain in her name. Her family placed it there. And if anyone would like to attend, we would like to invite you. We're trying to get the word out. So I know that's election day. So, but it doesn't take you all day to vote. So, if you know her, remember her and her husband, Buck, 
We're going to dedicate that fountain and Linda, her family's going to be there. And so that's May 4th uh, at 11 a.m. at Tranquility Harbor. Thank you. Thank you, Roy. This is for Lucy if you're taking minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else like to speak? <clears throat> Going once, going twice. Public hearing is closed at 7.15. That's the first time we've only had one. That's good. Next is the council member's comments. Paula, starting with you to my right. I want to begin by saying thank you to the um, group members that made the um, police memorial area so beautiful. If you haven't seen the lights, it looks really good. So thank you for doing that. That's a well-deserved honor, and it's at um, the front of the Marriott. The um, the area to the side of it is also being prepared for uh, the Chris Reed plaque, and that's in progress. And so we're glad to see that it's forthcoming. And May 18th will be the uh, first eats. If you knew Christopher Reed, he was a great sponsor for the the eats um, um it will take place in that area on the 18th and that's all i have oh i want to say thank you for the easter events that was a great uh, program and the kids really enjoyed it so thank you to all that volunteered lucy all right i i'm super excited because not a cat season is about to start if you didn't know that so May and June are when we have kids running around and swimming in the neighborhood. So be careful, especially around the pool. Um, the meets will be on the Saturdays in June. So five Saturdays will be the five meets. And we only have two home meets this year, so hopefully parking will be a little bit better for residents around the pool during the rest of the Saturdays of the month. Um, at registration, I was really happy seeing how much love people have for this community with that swim team. It was, it was really impressive. Um, just to be part of that whole registration where people are volunteering for different things they want to do for the swim team in the community. So thank you to the Nauticats for being a great part of our community. Happy Tax Day. Um, if you didn't get those done or <laughs> And I think it's Sarah's birthday. It is. And then it was Officer Hughes' birthday. Yeah, okay. See, so, okay. I listened. I knew that one. I heard that one coming in. But happy birthday to everybody. That's all. Chase? Happy birthday. Um, also, I don't really have much to say other than um, I'll still be painting curves. I'll just be doing that forever. Great so, uh, <laughs> wall in China. Once yeah. you start, you can start you over. Know, uh, <laughs> so Michelle and I will be out there this weekend. And he, I got your text message. I kind of forgot about you. Um, every time I try to leave your house, it's wet right in front of it. So I can't do it. So if it's dry, I'll do it this yeah. And also, yeah. also, my number is on the, the city website. So if you want me to come to yours specifically, just reach out to me and I'll, I'll get you this. James? So I'll uh, you echo the thank you for the proclamation of our I'm here and appreciate it. So thank you very much. Um, I'd like to say happy birthday to my fellow council member. Um, I, I'd also like to celebrate Tax Day. Everybody loves it so much. Hopefully you got it in. Apparently there were some issues with a couple of things on blocks, but you know, use them, I'm sure. Um, I'd also like to say that um, not only did we have a passing my, my father, we also had a passing of a long-term resident also, uh, Mr. Kirby, and um, he, he passed away suddenly um, this last week, and unfortunately, um, he was one of the fathers that actually went around back in the day when I was probably nine years old, and we all went the back of the pickup truck to go to baseball and soccer practice because he would coach us. So um, my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family, um, and them who lost their father. Um, I'd like to say congratulations on each turn of heart. Well done. It was a hand of heart effort. I was tied up, unfortunately. The invitation was wonderful. A lot of people out. It was fantastic. Um, I think we accomplished more than we planned on, which was really nice. Um, and then just a heads up, uh, instead of the third Tuesday of this month, because I have a, I have a conflict uh, evening, uh, we'll be doing the public safety meeting that I have to tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. So it'll be uh, up here on the 16th at 6 p.m. 
And then uh, one other thing, I will update around. I've been in discussions with uh, TGLO and NOAA in relation to coastal erosion grants that we can be spending in for. And I should have further information uh, over after the next couple of weeks on uh, how we've been for you. Thank you. Sarah? Uh, first, I would like to say my condolences to your family. Uh, I met your dad briefly in the line at the 4th of July parade. He said a few words, and it was pretty funny what he did say. Um, you know, I've also written a book about him, so I'm excited to read more about him. Um, yes, my, it's my birthday, and I was eclipsed by the solar eclipse, so we, we uh, moved the meeting from last week to, to my birthday, and that's okay. Um, I wasn't able to be at unification day, but everything looked wonderful in the city. We were at, uh, in Galveston with my husband's family at uh, the beach house for the Easter weekend. So, um, and um, what else? Oh, um, I'm doing a rounding the Nauta Cat season. I'm rounding up corporate sponsors. That's what I'm shaking down people from honey or Alex last who I walk into a place and they hand me a check and he's like, what's going on here? Uh, but this, I'm just doing my job. So um, if, if anyone knows anybody interested in sponsoring the Nauta Cats, uh, reach out to me, but on my personal email, please. Um, and then I wanted to tell Phil that my daughter is learning about government. Um, <laughs> and, and she wrote a whole diatribe about what she would do if she was going to be the mayor. And so I thought I'd let you know. Um, Watch gonna, out, right? Yeah. <laughs> she said she might you. Sure, sure well. um, make five more city pools, make three more dog parks, make a couple more donut shops, which I have been neighbors to agree on that one. I think we've got enough, but um, make more Java owls, so I made sure to send that to John. Make more water fountains, more zoos, more movie theaters, more Starbucks. I didn't, I didn't tell John that. Um, more malls, more schools, more post offices. If there's extra land, build houses there. More classrooms and schools, more targets, more baseball stadiums, more video game makers, more home depots, more houses, and more wish fountains. So she has big plans. So, so she, goes, she goes into bigger, better, more. And, and, no, and no budget, clearly. Uh, so I just wanted to end on that. Like, there you go. So. Well, yeah, um, I echo everyone's comments. I think I had a check the list off and everyone covered everything. Um, unification day was great, the Easter egg hunt was great. Thank you to our Easter Bunny, uh, it's a great event. The street street meets is coming up, and then don't forget about Heels and Wheels that is happening on election weekend, so you can go vote and go up and out like we got yep. Let me let me bring it home, but the uh, the one thing I, I want to emphasize a couple things is uh. <laughs> I, I do want everybody to realize that the May 18th uh, time for the the um, <laughs> the, uh, the launching of, of the Chris Reed plaque as well as uh, the return of Street Eats. It's, uh, you know, the, the things that the Chris Reed family did to uh, to really make it unique. And then, and then the city staff and Paul in particular making the uh, the uh, emergency responders uh, memorial even better than it was. I think it's going to look really nice, and uh, I won't steal a thunder. We, we've also gotten quite a quite a band for that for that night. I think everybody will be pleased with. So uh, come out and uh, and uh, I, I I know that the plaque will be up sooner than that, but uh, uh, May 18th is where we're going to honor Chris and. Uh, and just have a, a cold one on the, on the city again. So the street eats is back. Um, the other, I, I, I've, uh, my phone blew up when uh, the crepe myrtles were uh, being murdered out on NASA Road 1. And my phone has been blowing up this week and everybody's telling me if you look, every single one has new growth on it. So they, they were not murdered. They were severely disfigured. <laughs> Hopefully that's going to come back. We still have the issue with tech stock, but we've got them to stop. But it doesn't look like uh, like they've, uh, they've died. Um, beautification Day, can't say enough about that. Uh, the the only thing that we haven't mentioned is I think there's another tranche of, uh, of plants that are going to be coming in this, this, yeah, this week and I think uh, this weekend and the following weekend. So uh, as much as has been put in, there's more coming. And uh, Paul heard me say this at the coffee, and I want to say it again here. As I, I'm, I'm really proud of how our city's looking. You, you look at the investments we've made, the investment in time by all the volunteers. Uh, the colors back. The tree. A lot of the trees are back. They look great. 
you know, they may need a little water or two, but uh, uh, from a from a standpoint of the city, it's it really shows what a little bit of a little bit of reinvestment, a little bit of taking care of uh, of uh, some needed needed uh, upgrading as well as uh, uh, color in plants. It's uh, it really really makes a difference, and I'm very proud of that. Um, I think you'll also be seeing a demonstration. We've heard everybody about the uh, concern of the park lights down in uh, in uh, David Braun. Uh, I think Paul will be here hopefully in the next week or two, have a demonstration of the modification right there uh, um, uh, by, by I guess, the really fun. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the parking, founder, lot. The parking at lot. David Brown Park. Right, right, at, yeah. right at the parking lot. Right, right there we did the, the, the way the road and the cut in the, uh, in the, in the curb. Uh, so there'll be one there to see what it looks like and what we can do, and that's a, uh, you know, he says it's a little bit, but I'm going to say it's going to be about a thousand dollars per light that we've done. So take a look at it. I hide, you know, be be the eyes and ears for people. Uh, see see what you think, and please be brutally honest as uh, as you can with with the quorum, but but be brutally honest and, and help us with that. And then uh, the last thing is is uh, you know the the boating season is starting off so the the uh, i really appreciate the guys at the volunteer fire department and the police i saw that uh, we've got the boat out there a little bit you know with uh, you know getting ready to launch uh the boats are starting to uh really go up and down clear creek as well as in uh in our cove so be aware of uh, uh boater safety be kind if you're out there recreating but but also notice that uh that's an agenda item here that we're going to be looking at really some of the things and uh, reviewing and reaffirming and, and maybe just affirming what what we uh, what we want to have for marine safety. It's some, some things I think have to change. Uh, and I'll leave it at that and we'll move on. Um, Paul. Yes. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, just uh, going back on beautification in Eastern Park, two very <coughs> good uh, events uh, was successful. Uh, our mosquito spraying machine is getting calibrated, so we're trying to get start spraying for mosquitoes this week, uh, if not early next week. The four miles of the waterline improvement project and the NASA Parkway waterline replacement is in the engineering phase, so hopefully we'll be going to uh, advertisement for that here in the next couple months. And then we also looked at the Saturn uh, out front, front of the Marriott, all the way down to NASA Parkway. Uh, we were hoping some of the plants and trees would come back. They didn't. Uh, so we, we got a, a quote just to see what the ballpark figure is. So it's about $35,000. So we'll be looking at funding uh, a source for that. Um, but uh, we also had some mulch put out there to try to adjust it up a little bit. And then you also notice the... Uh, new banners on Saturn and uh, Space Park. It's uh, 12 American flag banners, and we'll have those up uh, until another event comes around. But uh, they look really good. We got a lot of uh, compliments on that. And then uh, on the something probably uh, the fire department will talk about uh, was their banquet. Uh, it was very nice. And um, Tom George uh, was, was honored 35 years of service. So a uh, great accomplishment there. So uh, that, so just go to the Compass Row, some nice pictures, and then all the other volunteers that got awards also. Uh, we did hire a new Public Works uh, employee, uh, got him to work really soon on a water break. Um, and then as the mayor mentioned, on May 18th uh, is the Street Eats, and it's also Armed Forces Day. So we have all the flags representing all the armed forces that would be out uh, on the median uh, right there at Space Park and uh, Saturn. And the lineup band is Marshland Ranch featuring Trey from the Fay that he was on American Idol last season. So we're pretty excited about that. And thanks, Cheney, for setting that up. And then also the other uh, band was the lineup, uh, their local band, really good, this variety of music. And then uh, happy to announce on May 22nd is uh, that week is Public Works Week. And so we will have a barbecue cook-off team uh, from Public Works employees uh, competing against all the other cities surrounding. I think there's like 33 teams. Um, that will be in Alvin. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. Uh, and then we'll have the uh, relocation of the Chris Reed dedication plaque. Uh, um, oh, no, 
that was earlier. But uh, we're pretty excited about the Public Works Week and, and having a big cookoff team and borrowing uh, the following you tier. pitch. You got you to have the, the name of a savvy, uh, you know. I, I think the guys are fighting about that right person. now. Actually, we, we have a uh, brisket uh, tasting contest uh, Monday uh, for staff to to try to, uh, to pick somebody. So it's going to be pretty fun. It's the first time we've ever done something like that. So we're pretty excited. So that's all I have, Mayor. Council, uh, real quick, the report for the police department for uh, numbers for March 312 officers, uh, 66 reports taken, 185 traffic stops, resulting in 98 citations, 132 written and verbal warnings, um, 17 arrests, 15 misdemeanors, two felonies, total of 4,670 miles of patrol, and an average response time was 1 minute and 84 seconds. Uh, I would like to recognize that this week is National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, uh, where we honor our dispatchers. Um, these are all the guys and the gals that are behind the phones and behind the headsets. This week, um, every year during the second week of April, the telecommunications personnel in the public safety community are honored. Uh, it's a week to remind everyone of the dispatchers' hard work and, and dedication in times of uh, intense personal crisis and community-wide disasters. Uh, these people are the first access point for those who are seeking all types of emergency services of 911. So please fire EMS. There are lifeline, um, they're the community's lifeline. So uh, we want to just honor all those uh, men and women that are over there in Webster serving us in the dispatch center. Uh, reminder that uh, on April 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Nassau Bay is again, PD is again participating with DEA, participating in the National Drug take back event, prescription drug take back event, um, gives the community an opportunity to uh, rid their homes of any potentially dangerous, expired, unused, or unwanted prescription drugs. Citizens can just drive right up here in the uh, driveway. We'll have a tent set out there, some officers collected, no questions asked. The only things that we cannot take because DA will not be able to accept them as liquids or needles or sharps. So only pills or patches that we can accept. Um, and just a reminder to everyone about the hours at the parks, um, throughout uh, David Braun and Howard Ward, Foundry Park, uh, Swan Lagoon. Uh, the parks are open from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Um, and the, uh, that's set by the city manager, which is outlined in our in our uh, ordinances, gives the city manager uh, supervision over the city uh, parks. Um, and again, those are from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. You, if you don't mind me chiming in here, there was a lot of discussion about whether or not there was an ordinance, and there is. And park closes at 11 p.m. so there's no reason for people to be down there right. and uh, we have every every ability to uh, to uh, you know investigate if somebody's down there. Right. the hours are not specifically on the ordinance but it gives the city manager yeah correct uh, control over that he can set those hours that already seems fit and that's what we're saying yep correct all right thank you Chief, I, got, I got a few things for you okay settling <laughs> up there um, no, I um, so you, you mentioned that the park's closed at 11 o'clock. Where are we at with the gate at David Brown Park? That, that, yes, Scott, uh, so we uh, are looking at, we have to install a knock system. So we're just trying to work out that uh, detail. Uh, okay, is it going to be uh, electric or is it going to be just a, a lock and chain? No, it would be electric and also it would have remote controls for a emergency response uh, and PD. <laughs> if they have to. Release too. Yes, and then and they'll have an override. It, it it's going to have a it's going to have a electronic box, so there's a good possibility that we'll it it will. Yeah. 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 We and we we uh, replaced the one at the wastewater plant, and uh, I think it's a little bit less than a thousand dollars. I think they've got it down, but. Uh, but one of the things that uh, we were uh, commenting about, if it's raining or thunderstorm this way, the, the officers can just hit the remote and go through and if they see any car. So we were kind of taking the pros and cons of everything. Okay. So, yeah. right. Yes, sir. Um, and then a couple more, Mr. Chief. Um, I, I wasn't here in the last meeting. I was traveling, so I didn't get to comment on a few things. Um, but I know that there was an active shooter train coming up, and I guess now it's already passed. But can you give us any kind of update on that, how it went, how many people attended, that kind of thing? Yes, sir. That was not this past weekend, the weekend before last. 
Uh, we held a uh, presentation of the Craze the Citizen Response Act this year event uh, program over at the uh, Lori and Ed. They opened it up to the general public on Sunday afternoon. Um, we had a good crowd, uh, 50 plus that was there. Um, very responsive. They were interacting with us uh, after the discussion, so it went very well. Okay. Do you have to plan on having another one of those in the future? Or have you yeah, we, we'll, we'll do those again in the future. Okay. Yeah, I think about that. And then also, I, I think James brought up at the past meeting um, on top of the block system, the active shots fired system. Is that something that you looked into, or do you have any input or update on that? I don't have any input or update on that for right now. Okay. No. Um, if you could take a look at it, I think it'd be something that would be helpful. I know once, uh, when I moved in years ago, um, within the first couple of months, I mean, there was several instances and it thankfully died down, but I think it would be something that would be helpful so that we know where those shots are coming from and, and kind of understanding what that system would be able to um, offer you. I know we don't have as many officers on patrol at once, right. um, so any kind of additional help, obviously, I think would be helpful. So just make sure to take a look at things. We will. All right, next to you. That's all I Thank you. <coughs> All right, good evening. So your volunteer fire department for the month of March ran 39 calls. Uh, we had 1,360 rough fish man hours to build a football system volunteer, um, and we stand at 40 members. So like uh, you heard Paul, the last Saturday of February, we went through our annual banquet call event for the best volunteer at time. Um, it's just time for us to come together and recognize the service that uh, folks volunteer at the city of Nassau Bay. And so, as you heard Paul say, uh, we were able to honor Tom George for 35 years of service to the city through the volunteer fire department, and Jim McGee for 40 years of service. So, it's a long time member of that. We definitely stand on their shoulders as uh, some of the younger generation. And then also, our firefighter of the year was Colby Dickerson. So, if you know uh, Mary Dickerson and Chuck Dickerson, have been long time members of the department, both with uh, 20 plus years of service. And Colby, and all of us held him in our arms when he arrived from the hospital. And so he's grown up in the fire department. So to see it come full, full circle, where now he's a member trying to make a career and working towards making a career as a firefighter to earn the uh, top award for the year, which is firefighter year, which is really great. So really good shout out to Colby and the work he's put in to get there. Matt, I saw it, but for other people here, your top responder? Our top responder was Javon. Uh, Javon, who's Javon? How many times has he won it like the past? He's he's the current. Is he the number seven. number one or number two for the past three years? Funny right? thing is, that if you look at the history of how we do the top responder work, there always tends to be someone gets this first. Javi Trujillo was in there for a while. Yeah. Um, Robert Avery had it for a while. So it's just these guys that come in, and of course, the life of all your ability yeah. and the volunteer changes. So Javon has been there, I think, the last three years. Three years, I mean, either one or, or second. Yep, so right. exactly. I think that's great. Ask him. He'll remind you of it. Just betting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want to say, Tom, thank you for your service. We all really appreciate your knowledge and, and being out there in the community. I also just want to say thank you for having me at the Open Board Banquet. Uh, my wife was there. Love it. Great event. Um, we didn't get to stay for the pool day. Um, but at the end, I think in the middle of it, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So again, <laughs> thank course. you. And thank you for all this. Yeah, Even yeah, if you're a board banquet, you know, taking time to serve our community. And then also, I just wanted to thank your son, Hudson. Um, he, I know, has already started his service. I saw him out at the Safety Patrol um, at Robinson, so it was great to, to see him out there. It's generation. Our it's kids, man. They're Start young, man, so I appreciate yeah. it. So, thank you. Thanks. Good, thanks, man. Yeah, thank you. Paul? Uh, so the public works side on our capital improvement projects, the uh, new uh, water plant uh, booster pump has been installed. Uh, also, the uh, VFD has been installed. We're getting the electrical um, completed. And so hopefully get that thing fired up. Pretty excited about that. On the wastewater side, uh, we had the catwalk. Uh, as of last week, they were still working on it. Um, and that, uh, that goes over the, the sewer plant. We had two water main uh, repairs completed. And also on the, the wastewater side, a 16-inch uh, knife gate valve was in, installed for preventive maintenance on the uh, Grit King. Also able to jet 800 linear foot of sanitary sewer uh, lines. And uh, a, we had a sewer uh, point repair completed on Lazy Lake. And then also the... Um, uh, boardwalk uh, repairs were completed, uh, and then also we had a bunch of irrigation lines and the water new water tap for the ADA fountain at uh, Interin Peninsula. And 
And then a hundred feet of uh, new drainage line was put in uh, at Space Park by the uh, Moody Neurological uh, Building. So, yes, ma'am. Yeah, are we making any movement toward automatic meter reading? We're we're that's on our grant wish list. Uh, so we're we're actively looking for that. Yeah, yeah. That that actually takes uh, uh, about Monday through Thursday. I lose probably about seventy five percent of public works just reading meters. And so yeah, so it, it would free up a lot of time in, in production. Yeah. I just want to make my wife want to say thank you, County Parks, for being an active in the show. It is. Really good. Feel even better after. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Robert, uh, that's uh, interim parts uh, supervisor, I think they added uh, right about 100 feet of lights also. So the circumference of the lighting is going to look really good. So uh, I think they're working on that this week. So hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The public works guys that are making the city shine. So Thank you. Enforcement. Good evening, Council. At this point, we've got 430 businesses registered on the books in the in the uh, micro system. As of today, we've collected an even 35,000 in revenue. I'm still having some pushback and collection issues. So this month, we sent out uh, 12 certified mails and issued 19 citations for non-conformance. Um, we've red tagged one junk vehicle, had it removed, um, five red tags for high grass, one dilapidated fence, and one dilapidated building. We've moved 39 solicitor signs on the city property. On the uh, fire marshal side, we've done 15 life and safety inspections, uh, six life and safety reinspections. Uh, two uh, short-term rental inspections, and three certificate of occupancy inspections. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, a 1910 Mass Parkway, the green box that was on Upper Bay, is going to be removed with the oh. help of Paul and Public Works. We got that done on Friday, so that looks a lot better. Um, did some code enforcement inspections on the commercial buildings on Circle Court. Went to 130 in particular. Uh, they've done a lot of repainting of the um, of the buildings, the interior, but they do have some issues with electrical boxes. So um, that's supposed to be done by the end of this week. Um, so they were red tagged for that. Um, we did one residential smoke detector inspection where new residents have called us out and that's just a service that we do for them, where to locate them uh, and just kind of give them some advice. And if you've noticed, there's new fire lanes and uh, the red striping at the star stop at the 18,000 point lookout where the Bon Appetit is, and at 1335 Space Park. The whole parking lot. The whole parking lot. That's really good. Yeah. And I want to give a shout out to Officer Hughes for uh, bringing a lot of this stuff to my attention, and uh, Officer Kreider as well. Yep. Shows. Officer Hughes, yep. just show real quick. I'm not sure if his fault would be or in there or not, but I'm having contact with some uh, residents about the lack of mailbox that the post office now has taped up across that um, at the uh, parking lot there, right across from the parking lot. <laughs> and um, if there's something that can be done as communication with the uh, with the post office there to get that operational again, or get us a new one. My my, under, my understanding is, is that it's been robbed several times. So if that's the case, maybe we need to look back at going back up to the older place where it was, which was as you exit. Yeah. We, we should, yeah, there's, I, I know they're looking at things, but that's, uh, yep, go ahead, please. So the, uh, that, that's not that's not unique to Nassau Bay. That's happening all in the uh, Houston, Galveston area with the post office that's coming down from, from Nashville. It has to do with uh, with, with mail, mail theft and fraud mm -hmm. from items that are in there. So uh, it's not just our mailbox. It's uh there, there's a there's a big push down in Galveston, but um that's coming down from from uh the rep, U.S. representatives from uh Randy Weber's office. The Randy Weber's office. Yes, he's been active with with the post office trying to get some answers to all that. Okay. So. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. That's it. Thank you. Any questions?
And then I'm going to move on to the consent agenda. We've got three items. Anybody have anything they'd like to have pulled out or have any any questions? Edit. I just have a comment about seven three. Mm -hmm. um, when I requested records from uh, departments in the past as a citizen, uh, some of the records were not date stamped. And um, I think that's critical. So uh, as part of this policy, I would just like to be sure that everything that comes into the city and goes out of the city is date stamped so that we have that information. Thank you. Ms. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion with uh, edits to approve the consent agenda. Um, I'd like to see 7.2, there were some misspellings in uh, yeah. the October 16th, which was, uh, it was Marfa Abbey, M-A-R-F-A Abbey, and then the last name of the barracks was misspelled. So that's B-A-R-F-A. I believe the Amdors have a new last name also. Yeah. So, so if we can make those edits, too, I, I would like to motion that. We approve those. With those edits? Yes, please. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Chase. Any any other questions? Any other comments here? And I'm going to call for the vote. All those <coughs> in favor? I believe passes 7 nothing. Parks and Recreation Committee. Good evening, everyone. So, yes, unification day was a huge success. Unfortunately, I was sick that day, but... We had a lot of the um, volunteers from the parks committee that came out and mm -hmm. assisted the garden club on their fantastic job that they always do. Um, and so, because we had a little, um, we weren't able to get as many volunteers from the students we had last year. It's turning into beautification month. <laughs> and this weekend, we're going to have, um, we're going to be planting the flowers in the uh, non-garden club um, uh, beds, which is the ones on Upper Bay, the ones in Howard Ward Park. Founders Park is going to get flowers. Mm -hmm. The, the little circle gardens right in front of the basketball court. And um, uh, did I already say Upper Bay Drive? I said it. So those are going to get done this weekend. And then um, uh, Paul worked with us that we, since we didn't have the students, we got a contractor who's going to come out and put the flowers in the medians like we had done last year. Uh, it was a really good price. They're also going to take where the moon tree beds are and uh, get all the weeds out of there put down a weed barrier and, you know, where you put in the, um, the uh, mulch there to make those look better. And we'll probably be doing some more of the yellow curb painting just to get, finish that off just in time for us to go into May and have our, have our spring done. So that was, that was really great. Thank you to everyone who helped out and participated on council and on the committees. Um, and then also uh, we'll move on to the, so if anybody wants to volunteer this Saturday at April, uh, April the, sorry, where are we? It's the April the 20th, the Saturday at 8 a.m. Um, we're going to be out in, in David Brown Park. And, and just it's not a big plant, so it'll probably only last like an hour or two. If you want to, maybe just email me at nbparksanddirect at nsla.com. So um, talking about the moon trees again, we've um, taken photographs of the plaques because they're, they were plastic and they kind of are melting. So we're going to get those made to match the Apollo Dog Park in metal. So I, I have a meeting with somebody that's going to give us a quote on that, how much it will cost. Um, and then we don't have the date actually for the next moon tree event yet. It, it's it's going to have to be either in the fall or the, the spring because it's just going to be too hot. To, to do it, okay. Yep. So we're going to, we'll, we'll postpone that until the fall until we have more open dates um, to do that. But um, we're going to make sure that the ones that we have right now are going to look excellent. Um, also the column, if you guys know where that, that, that historic home, we took the dead bushes out of there and we're going to uh, be looking at putting in the same kind of um, uh, cement, sort of like cement with a white, is that white paint on there that you put on there, Paul? Those little, the, where we have the plaques out in front, we've been sort of doing a, uh, everything matching, which looks really nice. So every time there's a plaque, like the ones out in front of City Hall, those white ones, and yes, have the moon trees, is that like cement with the mm -hmm. with white paint on yes. it? Yes. Yeah, so they'll all look the same throughout the city, any kind of historical, like, monument or something interesting for people to look at. And we're going to be putting QR codes on there so it'll link to the city website and tell the stories of those different things. Um, help, help me here real quick, Paul, you made it. Is there water in that circle? Is there a sprinkler? Oh, yes. All the moon tree. Uh, no, 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 no. With a column. No, sir. There's no irrigation right there. Okay. We talked about maybe doing a, um, a 
some kind of garden that doesn't require it, you know, either rocks out there or something. Somebody mentioned doing blue bonnets out there because those naturally grow. Um, but, you know, it's something we can talk about at the next parks meeting. Oh, by the way, the next parks meeting is going to be April the 24th at 6 o'clock. Um, there's going to be an election here. So we thought it'd be a good idea to have it out in David Brown Park because we're going to have the pickleball vendor come to give us a presentation. Um, and then we'll be right there next to the pickleball okay. part. So we can all look at it. There's a, a lot of things. We, we have the, the last um, quote she gave us, uh, came out. $68,000, um, but we had also asked for them to remove some dirt and things like this that were extra. They also are putting in, in their first quote, which was 33, they didn't have the new um, uh, nets. So th this one included the nets and they didn't have all the fencing. So it included the fence. That's why it went up to 48. Um, but uh, that doesn't include removing some of the dirt. So we had like a high wish list for the 68,000. So I think we need to have another um, you know, go around with the vendor to make sure that everybody is on board and, and Paul can see, you know, what they, what everybody's asking for and digging out the dirt. Maybe we can do that ourselves so it won't cost so much. But that'll be um, at the David Brown Park. That's, that's probably the single largest request for expansion of activities in the big park is, yeah. is, uh, is pickleball. Yeah, and it's real popular. It's always packed, but it is, the ground is starting to crack there it's starting to look really really bad and um, uh, so we'll that price would include resurfacing that putting in the new nets and then putting in an extra pickleball court with the fence with the nets and um and then also that would include reno renovating the practice tennis court which is a disaster right now but we have to look at the you know where the dirt is and what we wanted to do with it and see like how the final price comes out so once that comes out, then we'll, we'll pass it on um, to you guys to go from there. But we're still kind of fine tuning it, um, and that will happen at the next at the next meeting. Now about the lights around the pickleball court. Originally, they included the lights for two thousand dollars a piece, but um, we had another member of our community who actually owns a, is a veteran and owns a light company. They came and made a presentation, and they were going to get a quote for us. And they mentioned to me that the lights need to be elevated. Because if they're flushed to the ground, they're going to rot, and then they won't be hurricane stable. So um, we asked this pickleball vendor if their lights would be elevated and if they would be hurricane standard, and they said no, they can't. They have to drop out of that. So we're going to get a separate quote for lights if we want to add two lights. You're going to need them. Yeah, we'll need them. So we're waiting for the quote from Mary Abraham, yeah. her company. Um, they source uh, from veterans. They source from America. And then, you know, if they can't, you know, compete, if, they, if it can compete with a foreign import. So that was kind of cool. And while we were out there, you're looking up and you realize that the tennis court lights look pretty bad. <laughs> uh, don't even know how old those are, but um, they could actually keep the pole um, and put just the top part on, which wouldn't be as expensive. So we're waiting on that quote, not sure what it's going to be or if we can even afford it, but at least we'll have it in case you wanted to add it you know, on the next budget cycle or whatever. But I think it's something that probably needs to be done eventually. They also are going to come in with a quote for the other lights um, being electric going that we're going to get a test with to see if that works. If that doesn't work, we'll have an alternate quote for the ones going around the back. The yeah. They were the saying they could light. do them electric. Um, the, the, the solar the, lights, yes. The, so, the solar uh, lights. No, 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 no. The ones for the, uh, for the tennis port. About... 75% has been transitioned to LED. LED. Yeah, we're moving the uh, uh, high pressure sodium. We're waiting on that to they, they give us a quote on that or not. But they were also going to give us a quote for the other lights. If that doesn't work out, we we'll have an alternate quote. If this, hopefully, the test one works out because that seems like a pretty good price at $1,000 a light. But um, they would give us another quote for that, they said. Um, so the, um, the street numbering, Chase talked about that a little bit. If anybody wants to come out and help, let us know. Um, the crepe myrtles um, look really great. They've all been trimmed. I don't know if you guys have noticed how beautiful that looks on the medium um, point lookout at Nassau Bay Drive and Upper Bay. Um, and also going through Queens Court there, all those got trimmed. It's looking it's looking really beautiful. Um, we uh, On the San Sebastian median, which was in the budget, actually two budgets ago, we just kept pulling it over. Um, we got some free crepe myrtles from the uh, the rep who is with the Boy Scouts. So we're going to utilize the Boy Scouts again. And you'll see the stakes going in down San Sebastian. 
that will show where the Boy Scouts can just, they, they show up and just put them in for us. So we're going to start putting those out there. Those are free. So that should save us some money on the 45,000 we had set aside to redo the flowers on the San Sebastian Union. And actually I was out measuring this weekend and a council member Summers, the two Boy Scouts came and helped me put in the stakes. So thank them for that. They're so cute. They saw me and came over just like the Boy Scouts should and helped me put those stakes in. Um, so we're working on that and going forward with that. Um, we're continuing with the Keep Nassau Bay beautiful um, survey, which is just going around the neighborhood if we see anything that looks like it needs to be taken care of. Um, signs, Paul's been working on that with us to get the signs in place and other things. The curves, uh, I wanna give a shout out to the code enforcement for all those red curves that are getting painted. I don't know, probably don't notice it, but you're like, and, oh, and parking so nice. lines. And, and parking the parking lines. lines, that's what code enforcement is doing. That. That's not just happening. Well, first we bug him <laughs> and then he does it, which is I drove by today where the Starbucks is. I'm like, oh, this looks so great. Um, so just those little things are really, really adding up, and it's, it's really nice to see that. Um, so the next thing is, let's see, okay, let's pick up all renovation. Um, we have five new benches that are coming, um, two in, in Howard Ward, and uh, more in um, in David Braun, and two over at Swan Lagoon. Uh, the, new, the new fountain with a bottle filler is over by the baseball field now, so that's installed. I saw that looks great, Paul. Um, so if you have something, like, yeah, this is so cool. Um, and then the baseball field looks really great. The last time I was over there, it's all like swept and it looks excellent. I see a lot of people out there enjoying it. Uh, so we have the in the Swan Lagoon, the seesaw is going to get installed. It's just been too muddy to do that. And then we already talked about Paul getting a quote to redo the sidewalk for the um, ADA and to make it wider so you can have carts going on there as well as walkers. Um, the sidewalk that is going through um, David Braun Park. You can see where the little golf cart symbols are there. That's That looks great. Um, the basketball court renovation is in process. They have the the backstops already ordered. The, or the, goal, the goals came in. They did? Oh, yes, so, uh, the goals hopefully any day now. Okay, so they'll put up the rest yeah. of the goals and then we can start with the renovation of the actual floor yes, to stop cars from going there in the future. Those blue benches are going to be moved over to those cement benches are going to be moved in front of the, the um, court so that the cars can't <coughs> drive in there again. We'll also keep those blue benches to move them out for the pickleball so you can, you know, it, we won't just get rid of them. They'll go out so you can sit around the pickleball court as well. So that is coming. Um, and then about our um, our uh, art feature with the, I mean, our artwork with the water feature, aka splash pad, uh, space splash pad. Um, our newest member of the Parks Committee, Jacob Ford, volunteered to do a vision board for us. And this weekend, the subcommittee is going to meet to kind of go over the final presentation that we are going to give to the Parks Committee on April the 24th. So what they're doing is just getting ideas. And then the vendor will go ahead and put together a drawing for us of what they could actually do based on this vision board. So that's going to be kind of cool. We have kids coming. The kids of the volunteers on the parks committee will come and just, you know, see if they want to, because we want the kids input, right? And uh, so that's going to, that's happening. It's moving forward. Um, and there's also the dock. We've talked about the floating dock, the dock in David Brown Park. Jack Cronin on the committee, he was on the pickleball, so he's moving on to this dock. Uh, he has a uh, he lives on the water. He has a boat, and he had someone that actually built a dock for him that he felt we could get for a, a better price. And he knows a lot about those docks and stuff. So he's got a quote coming in on that. So we'll look for that in the near future. That's where the dock is sort of broken over there right now. It's by the reflection guard, and it's real dangerous. You can't even call it a dock. Yeah, you can't even call it a dock. That's true. And so we're we're looking into that. That's coming up. The electric box wraps. Um, that Royce has been working on with some other committee members, uh, I think Jacob Bell and, and Laura Ford, and they um, are in the beginning uh, stages of securing permission and talking to artists and to get some kind of space theme. If, if you guys have seen down on El, not El Camino and um, Hercules, there's a, a box there that's kind of cool with some space theme on it, and so they're looking at that right now. Uh, the Statue of the Astronauts, um, Kathy Huff's working on that. She's working with some art schools uh, to get a rendering because most of these places that are doing the statues 
don't want to do it without doing a rendering first, don't want to quote it, sorry, without doing a rendering first, and they wanted $600 to do the rendering. So she's going to work with, she's already talking to some universities, maybe University of Houston and San Jack, to see if they have some students that might want to put that together um, and, and give that to us before we go forward. Um, the bathroom in the David Braun Park, um, Paul gave us a, um, some layouts of some ideas that he had. Do you want to speak more about the bathroom, Paul, because you have all the details? Yeah, so the uh, the contractor that uh, has been building some uh, bathrooms locally for some other cities came out, I believe it was last Thursday or Wednesday, and uh, basically uh, for a demo and then a rebuilt. We're just waiting to see if it needs to be elevated since it's in a flood zone. And so uh, he's working up a, a, uh, a quote for that, and we're just waiting to see if it has to be elevated. But uh, yeah, it's the latest, the latest of... Uh, bathroom features. Wanted to, um, I, the mayor was asking for it to have a better water capacity. Yeah, this would be including an uh, upgrade on the water line and the, the sewer. Yeah. Sewer also. And hot water. And, and, and also yeah. more holes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and more more space for that. So yeah, so that would be a big improvement. We're not going to do the artwork on that until we get the new, if, you know, I don't know, the new one might look so great, but um, for the art reel. So that, that's kind of cool. So a lot of fun stuff happening. I think, oh, the soccer pitch, uh, we're still looking to get a quote on that. The first people that we asked to go out there, they wanted to do, this is kind of an issue that we have here. With everything, I think Paul knows about this really well, like with the pickleball court, you know, we're trying to get these alternate quotes because we just have one little tiny pickleball court. And what you're finding is that you get these people with these million dollars and 15 courts up to regulation. And we're like, no, 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 we don't need it up to regulation. <laughs> um, and it's the same thing with the soccer pitch. They want to do some fancy thing that's up to regulation with the sprinkler system that keeps it green. I was like, no, we just want to level it. <laughs> yeah. And so that's kind of a, a difficult thing. So we're still working towards that and, and trying to get a quote on that, to have the soccer pitch right next to the baseball field. And that's it, unless you guys have any questions. Nope. No, well, I, I will say I had one person contact me today and I told them they should come and speak at City Council meeting now. But they said that they were asking that more native plants be planted. Oh yes, we have a we have a native garden that the garden club got approved by the people like they, they're gonna put it out there. We're gonna have another native garden now closer to the peninsula. And um we have been putting in native plants. Okay, they, they were commenting on the uh creek myrtles, I guess they're not native to North America, so they were talking about uh I'm not a gardening person, so this means more to you guys. Than Roy, Roy stuck my shovel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I'm just making, I'm putting it out there. I appreciate, appreciate it. And actually, there was we. I didn't talk again about the little garden that you know that they're going to do on Leeward Lane. There was somebody that came to me and said they would donate a native garden there, um, but that's gonna you know we're gonna get to that after we finish some other things first because of timing and things like that. So yeah, there there there's that has been definitely done. I mean, crate myrtles are probably the best for here because um, they just grow back. If you cut them back, you see them growing back again, and they're you know they look beautiful and things like that. And it's it's, a, it's really been good for this neighborhood. But we will look at that, and we have actually been incorporating that. Anything else? Okay, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you still doing special events? I'm working for special events. Then, but, uh, then we could use a report. <laughs> I have one. So Eastern the Park was a huge success. Thank you to everyone who came out and volunteered. It was a lot of fun. Um, very good. Now we're starting to plan for 4th of July. And the thing that we're doing right now is working on updating the veterans list. So if you have any comments or want to make sure you're on there or want to make any changes, let us know. Michelle Michelli is going to be leading that. And her email is mmichelli, M-I-C-H-E-L-I, at peoplepc.com. And we also have Nassau Bay SEC at gmail.com, which is easier to remember if that works for you. Or just contact me and I'll make sure that your um, list updates are getting to the right person, which is Michelle. And more to come on 4th of July, but that's all for today. Yeah, and I, I would really like to see us see how we can organize to make sure we don't miss any veterans. I think we've had some, a little bit of that. And that, that that brings a little tear to my eye because I, I think that's really something I want to honor. Yes. Folks. And Michelle is definitely committed she, to that. That's, so that's why she wants to take the reins and make sure we have a good list because her husband is also better. Is, is there something we can put into the
compass rows and things like that to be and give it some pretty good feature just to make sure that we don't we don't forget our uh, our veterans for Fourth of July. Sure. Yeah. We've done it in the past. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Planning commission. Uh, the planning did not meet last month. Our next meeting is scheduled for May fifth. Okay. Thank you. All right. Moving on to old business. This is uh, agenda item 9.1, consider and take action on the ordinance uh, 02024-04-15-D regarding the apartment complex crime index ordinance. This is again a first of two readings. James, did you did you want to make mention of something here? Or? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Here. Thank you. Um, so previously, and uh, we had a table uh, putting something together for the crime index to include the hotels and extended space. Uh, predominantly, these uh, the three areas that we see the majority of the uh, crime the crime train in, and uh, with that, we revisited the ordinance and now. Uh, have updated it uh, as in this first reading uh, in relationship to one uh, course with the definition of what the hotel complexes are and apartment complexes are. Um, these also include the extended sites. Uh, updated it to authorize council to designate uh, the reporting on this. Uh, included an index which actually is based off of occupancy instead of number of units um, and that's a key important factor of this is that based off the number of units because no hotel no extended stay and no apartment complex in our city is 100 full all the time um, with that uh, what will happen is similar to the apartment complex that will be mandated if they fall within a threshold underneath uh, whatever we list as the percentage threshold for the prime next being is they'll be mandated to participate in that and inside the program, uh, they will also uh, be fine, or the program fee will consist of a $2,500 fee for them to participate in that. Um, and in case that the, uh, any of the uh, complexes decide that they do not want to participate, uh, it will be automatically inducted into the program and will be uh, required to pay the participation fee. So let me let me chime in here and help a little bit too. There's, there was a very in-depth meeting between um, the city manager, <coughs> the police, and the finance director, James and I, and we really went through the guts of this. And um, you know, one of the things that that has been changed here that I I really like is that the the criteria for placing a either a hotel or or a an apartment complex was done by just an average of the amount of crime activity in each one plus 50 percent of that average which i i think does a great disservice because you could have very poor crime you know uh rates that the average was there and, and they got us 50 percent which means the program which i want to give kudos to the, to the police department that program where we get involved with the management where we go over the different things and help them do the fundamentals in order to be able to reduce crime it really works i believe it works and what we've done here is is move to where we just have the, the data as to it says crime index. That's a that's a fancy way of not saying crime rate, and and it'll be presented to here at council, and then with that with that data, it'll be the council's responsibility to say the threshold what we will tolerate, which I think is a much better mechanism than just some mathematical calculation that does an average where you could have a bunch of poor averages and not really implement the program that that the police. Uh, police department does so uh, I think this is a really great uh, update in regards to uh, how we look at this and in, in my mind I, I really and, and then what came out is I really want to make sure we have the right threshold so that we engage that program <coughs> the, 
uh, we get that that partnership with the with the owners to to to, to drive down crime. I don't know if you Paul or Chief, if you want to make anything. Good. Sure. I have two comments. Uh, is there any reason we're not including uh, short-term rentals? Um, in in there? There? Sorry. No. Uh, apologies. That. Underneath the context here, if you look at the slide of uh, A under section one, uh, the definition is defined as hotel, and that includes the term includes hotel, motel, tourist homes, tourist house, tourist sports, lodging house, inn, room house, or bed, and breakfast. Which so would we'll include short-term rentals. So it will include we'll, STRs. Yes, that, that's perfect. And I particularly like the fact that. It, the city council is going to get notification of the scores and, and mm -hmm. the operations at the particular complex. And they're gonna, they're, the police is going to chart, we're going to work with them and go over the data to really set not just something that's arbitrary, but something that's meaningful. Great. Thank you. In my mind, my personal yeah. What's the frequency of the rating? Uh, currently, it's semi annual. But oh, inside of this updated one, we're able to dictate if we see that there's more issues, we can have it done on a more regular basis. Like my, my view, I, I like the uh, semi annual. It gives time for the program to work so that we see that these are these are not things that are going to, you know, take place one month and immediately see. So it's going to it's it's going to take take some time for the program to, to work its way through. So, for example, the um, STR in Swan Lagoon that had vandals coming out mm -hmm. they would obviously fail they'd be one out of one because there's one would that be one unit then that they had one incident so that for that yeah. six months they would be failed and that they would have had an additional fine in the program to remedy i, I think that's right okay that's correct and it would be based off of occupancy versus this unit so there could be 10 occupants inside of that place and we would have a little bit higher occupancy on that unit. I'm just seeking some clarification on the appeal process because I'm kind of, you know, the what process? The appeal process that they're allowed. Um, I just want to make sure that, you know, this is not going to be a sort of delay tactic by them um, to comply. Uh, it looks like they're allowed an appeal based on their changing occupancy rate. I guess the problem with apartments is their occupancy is constantly changing. So my concern would be. Okay, an apartment complex appeals, you know, based on their changing uh, occupancy rate. And then how many how many appeals are they allowed? It looks like they're allowed one hearing. Um, but are they allowed to just do this unlimited time? Are they allowed to? So to answer that question, that, that section was pulled from the original ordinance that was put in place. Okay. Uh, that was prior to me updating this ordinance. So uh, again, this is the first reading. Okay. So, as a first reading, if there are any amendments, yeah, well, I, how do you amendments have it? Yeah, I certainly would would maybe add something in there about. I uh, mean, obviously, you don't want to kill their due process, but I think that, that it could become a situation where they would maybe appeal, appeal, and then you know, then they're in the next term of, of uh, having to report their view occupancy level. So, I just I would see maybe some issues there, but I definitely think that that's something else. I'm not a part of the creation of this, but maybe just maybe consider that a little bit. Chief, any comment on that? If you don't mind, have you had issues with that previously when you did the project with the apartment? So previously, the <clears throat> excuse me, previously the um, appeal process was for any when the numbers were drawn at the at the beginning of the year, and they had one appeal for that for that particular process. We only had one uh, per appeal. per year or per reporting cycle. Or, Reporting cycle. Okay, so that could be two a year. There could be. Yeah. Could be. Okay. Yeah. Is there, what if they like lose half of their occupancy? I mean, is there a, a situation where I heard it's all that one feel of what you're saying? Yeah, I, it, this, this is a work in progress. We have, we have not used occupancy in the past. The current ordinance that is built uh, goes by the, the number of units per apartment complex. We're now bringing in the uh, uh, no, I can see it, but we're also bringing the, the hotels. <laughs> I anticipate that there's going to be a difference because the hotels are going to have a varying occupancy depending on weekend, days, you know, number of units. If there's an event in the area, the hotels are probably going to be, excuse me, the apartments are going to be a little bit more stable. But again, those are going to fluctuate from month to month also. 
So um, the SPR occupancy was, would be a bit, you know, I, I uh, guess they have a limit on their. I, 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 they they have a limit, though, depending on the ordinances built. SDRs, so many occupants per bedrooms and, and bathrooms and stuff, but we don't, uh, we don't, I don't know that we're going to get a number of how I many people are actually staying there for right, each rental. And that'll it's, constantly you, know, you, you, rent, you rent the STR, and if you can have 10 people there, you can have up to 10 people. <laughs> so I'm not sure, that, I'm, I'm not even sure that the, uh, the STR um, operators will know the full or the correct occupancy. But um, we'll just have to see where that goes. Well, with that, though, I mean, QB has a, they pay the hotel tax a lot of times. So it pays the state. So only the occupants can use have to pay that to the state. Well, that's the amount that they can have, right? We're basing it on the amount that they do have, which is what we said, right? On the apartment complexes, we said it's based on their actual, on their actual occupants. It's on their actual physical occupancy, not on what they can potentially have, right? Yeah. The units, the way it was calculated before, you could have an example would be Sapphire that during the period of time during COVID, that place was that you can occupy. You have 100 units mm -hmm. and there are major callbacks to those locations. Right. And because of that, they didn't calculate a 50% occupancy, they calculated 100% occupancy, which lowered the threshold down so they never met the criteria to meet inside the ordinance of the bill in 2012. Right. I understand. I understand why the purpose of why it's being worded like that. But I'm just curious about how it would relate to SDRs. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think a lot of thought was put into this, and I really, I really appreciate you guys doing this because it is lengthy and detailed, and I like it. Uh, Chief and James. So when it comes to this appeal, it's not that they're necessarily appealing constantly their their actual occupancy rate. It's if they get calculated and then they're deemed to be a part of this program. And then they will appeal basically saying, hey, the designation be the occupancy rate that you used in that calculation is incorrect. That's when that appeal would kick in, right? They would get one of those because once they get notified, they have 10 days to appeal saying, hey, whoa, 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 our occupancy rate is different than what y'all calculated. Is that how it's well, for whatever so reason? The only appeal that, that we've experienced was several years ago <clears throat> with one apartment complex. And they were appealing that not all of the crime reported that they agreed that it was a crime. Um, so we, went, we had to go, the appeal process was going through each one of those calls individually um, to explain why it, was, why it was recorded as a as a reported crime. As far as the occupancy, we're going to have to get that from the management teams. I mean, we, that's not that's not something that we get here. Um, I, I, I think it's going to be alert. Yeah. Just honestly, I'm going to just jump in yeah. here. I mean, I even got a, a text from somebody. Is, you know, sometimes STRs are part time, not full time, mm -hmm. and right. occupancy is going to be, you know, a, a part of that. I, I think the real part of this, though, is and and, and the the hotels and the I believe the apartment complexes, except for maybe one. Uh, are on board that they want to make sure they provide data streams to us to be able to to better help our organization manage crime. Uh, we had a discussion with Hilton, and Hilton was saying, "Yeah, we just had a had a a um, automobile stolen in, in in our parking lot." Their management takes those things seriously, so anything that can be done <coughs> to help that will do it. And, and I think this was really the the. the the thrust was was more to go after the uh, you know the larger complex, and then we're going to have a working process on the I think on the short term. The, 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 if I may, sorry, Chief, if I may, is that um, the important factor here is they are reporting their occupants. Yeah, correct. You're not. They're reporting to us. So if they're saying we got the occupancy wrong, that's from their reporting and the occupancy, not our correct. guessing what their occupancy is. And occupancy is based on number of units or number of people because this says units and you were describing people. Occupancy is the number of how many residents they have inside. How many rooms booked? Yeah. Rooms. So rooms so two booked. people per room counts as one. Counts as one room. And then I think we also need clarification that on an STR is that number of rooms in the like staying rooms in the house. Whatever they're. I mean they're. Yeah. Inside the ordinance, inside the ordinance for STRs, there's a definition of the amount of people that are allowed to be inside of an STR bedroom. I believe that's at uh, uh, no more than four. But a hotel could be four and it still be counted as one yeah. unit of occupancy. But 
again, I, I, I want to be clear here because it's not based off people. There may be a ordinance that they get they get a citation for having too many people who are beyond the the safe for the guidelines here. But the the key is is they are putting on generally so you know the uh, internet that they have a room available and they need to define how often that room's available over the year and that will become part of their options. Yeah I just see that a uh any house that's being rented would be an, a unit one. So you mm -hmm. can't say, oh, I had 14 people with only one incident. I think it's, it's one for one. I would, I would, I would suspect uh, the apartment complex has, just using figures here, 150 units. And for one month, they have, they're going to have units that are being in the process of being rehabbed for the next year. So they have five units that are being occupied. So now they have 145 units occupied. Um, I would suspect with the STRs, if they have one str but it's not full every weekend or every day then that's how we calculate we would calculate oh, zero, zero or one day yeah. that's the way the apartments are calculating the number of their their occupancy by the number of units and how often they're they're filled not the number of people living in a bed, you know, bedroom <coughs> like that. Okay. And, the, and the punishment you know i'm thinking about the punishment here it says the ordinance Providing any person violating the terms of this ordinance shall be deemed guilty of a misdemeanor and upon conviction shall be fined and somehow to exceed the maximum allowed by the law. And each day of violation shall be deemed a separate offense. So, are, is, the, is the complex the entity that is being. Yeah. Hit? Okay, so. The owner. The owner, owner of the, of the, the complex. Okay, because I was like, we gotta have a person to be guilty. Or, or management. Hmm? Owner or management. Yep. Okay. I have a question for um, purposes of the calculation as far as occupancy goes, it says on a monthly basis. Would that be like as of the last day of the month, the average of the month or month will be defined? Yeah, I mean, uh, typically, with the occupants, uh, they're reported in the state of Texas uh, on a monthly, monthly basis. Yeah. So it would be room days. <clears throat> that, yeah, that 20th. Averages the month ending? The, the state of Texas, as far as the hot funds that are uh, reported to the state for occupancy, are done every month on the 20th of the month. Correct. And that's the average of the month, so you would know the average occupancy? That's how they are calculating based off of that. So I, my, I think it comes out there, but I mean, it's room days, right? So if you have 100 rooms for 22 days or 30 days, however you want to look at it, it'll be. You know, thirty times that 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 uh, hundred rooms yeah. for room days, and you'll see how many room days were consumed in a in a month. And I think that, in my opinion, it'd be nice to have occupancy clarified a little bit in here, just mm -hmm. saying that we want to establish this as because room days doesn't come up at all if you look at the example spreadsheet. Yeah. And if I owned an STR, I wouldn't know how to calculate my occupancy. So I think we need guidelines on what it means to. It'd be primarily for the hotel. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. But that, I think that's a that's a fair mm -hmm. fair clarification. <clears throat> Anything else? Any other comments? This is a first reading. This point out I can see it does have a calculation number of units reported. Uh, number of units that are reported units occupied times 100% of occupancy. And that is in uh, section three. Yes. The, again, I hear I, I what Lucy's saying is with the hotels is that you won't have a complete occupancy of, of a room throughout the whole month less of the apartments but for the hotels that could make it complex to make sure it's apples to apples that's what i hear her saying because it's based on room days and our calculations should incorporate that okay that's an easy thing to fix <laughs> anything else
question. Um, are these complex decisions not already even criminal background checks? That was done with the warrant. Maybe that was going to be a part of them. It already is part of the, the current brand index that is done only for departments. Mm -hmm. they don't. But it, okay. it, it's also we found in chief, I don't want to put words in your that there's a Depending on the management group from time to time, there's a buy into that practice or not, depending on ownership. Yeah, so what we found in the past, depending on the management team for it, and this is just strictly for the apartment complexes, we, we haven't dealt with the uh, hotels or motels on any of this, but the apartment complex, depending on the management team that's in there, depends on how thorough the background that they're yeah. in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I believe probably. All of them are doing a fairly decent background check now, um, but it depends on the management team. Uh, they use private um, private parties to do their background checks, and again, depends on how much money they want to spend on that background check, how deep and thorough it's going to be um, to go into their backgrounds. So. <clears throat> again, that's why I like the program because you they they get run through the you know, the, the cold eyes vetting and, and rigor just to say, okay, what are you doing on these fundamentals? <laughs> with the, the property requirements, with the security officer, the security line, and landscaping, is that going to be done through code enforcement? Or who's going to be enforcing? Who's going to be checking all this? That's the police department. Is yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. right. so once they get into the program, you know, you have the crime watch, you know, session, and you have you walk them through all of this, or how do they? How does this get done to make sure? So what we do is we sit down with the management teams again in the past with the apartment complexes, and we go through we we walk the property with them and we say you need additional lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, determination: Do they need do they need a security personnel on the property? Um, some of the some of the apartment complexes already have um, security personnel. They have courtesy officers that are living on the property, so that would probably be something that we we would address with them. But it's already taken care of um, those type of things. So uh, some of those things that are in there would not probably apply to the hotels and motels having a monthly crime watch program. It's going to be very difficult for a hotel and motel to have a monthly crime watch program for affluent, uh, you know, transient population. I'm not so sure because they have quite a bit of safety programs that are there in crime and, and safety. Their employees and their hotel people are a very high criteria. I think you're going to just find we're going to adapt into the different systems of it. That are there. And so, going back to background checking, maybe they conduct at their own expense a criminal background check on all current future residents and who kind of just said that we thought they were trying to do this as cheaply as possible. Maybe we should delegate exactly what or designate exactly what level of criminal background check we want, you know, through what service or, you know, instead of uh, you do it your way. I'll, I'll leave. I'll, I'll, so you do I'll refer way. over to Mr. Gray, but I think we get. Kind of on a slippery slope if we start determining which which uh, private party they're going to have to use. Well, that's certain that's certainly a concern. I think we'll we'll look at this. We'll talk about it. See if we can we we'll recognize what you want to do. Also, there's just some misalignments in here. Just don't be able to come over. You know, a lot of this is when you get the data and you yeah. start going into the program, you're gonna you're gonna find out what the root cause for the crime rate is. And you with the chief, I think you give them discretion to be able to implement those elements that make sense for what's going on. Not gonna be uniform. <laughs> any, other, any other questions? Because I, I wanna push the agenda. This is just the first reading. And I, I think we caught some of the uh, yep the uh, the modifications. And we'll make those for uh, for next time. We we'll move forward. We we'll move forward. All right, the M six security grant funding update. So we're in council. Uh, my friend, obviously, you also might from M6 Global is here also. Uh, this, is, this is going to be on an executive session for a little bit more detail uh, because this is a security issue. But um, 
we have been in contact uh, working with M6 Global and their vendor um, ESD, which is a grant funding opportunity or a grant funding program that, that they're doing some research um, and going <coughs> the knowledge and looking at different grants that are available. Um, we met with them back uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago um, virtually, and uh, they're going through different grants and looking to see what we may qualify for, we may not qualify for, um, what's available out there, um, deadlines and things like that. So that's where we're at right now is working just, with that group. To, uh, just for the group. citizens, can you give a, an indication for the first, you know, the, the area that was first identified as what we tackled, just the magnitude of those aggregate dollars that we're talking about and what are those from a grant funding would be? Yeah, I'll call it like interesting. Yep. Sure. Uh, thank you all for having me again. I appreciate it. Good to see you all. Um, first, I'd like to say condolences to Mr. Abbey on the death of your father. Um, what, a, what a proclamation, right? Wow. Yes. I didn't know when it was going to stop. So, you know, um, how do you. Uh, we, we called things too. So, yeah, this how guy, you, how amazing guy. That? I don't know. That's pretty. That's what a right? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, condolences. So, um, so to answer your question, so what we've identified is you do qualify for multiple federal grants. Uh, we're working with a company that we partnered with, uh, it's called EMD in New York City. Don't hold that against them. Uh, they have offices throughout the United States. Uh, California, I know that probably doesn't help much either, but, uh, and then some other areas. But um, EMD's been doing this for 15 years at the federal level. They have a 95% success rate. Um, the beauty of working with EMD, $5,000 flat rate, we make zero money on them. Our, our only ask is that we just be considered uh, for the work afterwards if you're granted the, the money. Um, like I said, 95% uh, success rate. Uh, you can build in your $5,000 fee into the grant for reimbursement. Um, if you don't get awarded the first year, uh, they will submit the second year for free for you. Um, if you want them to walk you through the entire process from beginning all the way to the end, because this will take probably about eight to nine months um, before you find out if you're awarded, uh, there will be a $500 uh, monthly fee uh, on top of that $5,000 uh, uh, initial. And but that's strictly um, you know voluntary if you'd like to do that. So uh, right now, what we're looking at is a minimum of seven hundred fifty thousand dollars that you qualify for. Uh, which eats up quite a bit of the initial quotes that we sent over to, to mitigate some of the things that we discovered in our assessment. I think the first uh, round was close to 1.1 million. That's the number I remember. Right, 1.1, little little less than 1.2 million. Um, here we go. Thanks. I actually had that back there, so I picked up the wrong one on the way out. Um, but yes, uh, looking at about 1.2 million. <clears throat> And um, that $750,000 would be applicable to that. Um, you can also- Almost almost three quarters. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, like I said, th these guys do this every day. 95% um, success rate. I am not concerned, honestly, uh, much about you guys not getting it because we've established a, a very good um, articulation for the need especially on some of your critical infrastructure. Um, yeah, it's right at 1.1 million. Um, and so um, 750,000 initially is what you qualify for. So like you said, it's, if you're awarded the, the money, the $5,000 would go back in, uh, would be paid uh, for the grant. You'd be reimbursed for it. So, Any other follow-ups? Okay, thanks. Just, just to add on to here is, you know, the, um, The, the funds that we have that are the gap is going to be, as you heard, about $350,000 if we do the full scope of activity. <clears throat> and uh, in, in my mind, we've got a lot of things that are, are wide open. And particularly, there uh, a lot of the initial focus is going to be down at the uh, you know the water water plant and, and hardening a lot of our our or water treatment facilities and water systems, which is we have, a month, we'll, we should be able to get the funds for, for those to get the gap. Some of the areas that's going to be a challenge is, is the funding for for uh, this building. So I'm I'm committed that I think we need to do it. If we have to even go into some reserves and 
pay back over a period of time is probably the right thing to do. Personal opinion. Just because it's just this time, this, the the our times are ones which you can't take anything for, for granted. At the point. Okay. Any other any questions on on grant funding or anything? I wanted I wanted you to hear those two numbers. I'm going to move forward. We also have a executive session going more into what exactly is hardening is going to take place. Um, on nine three, I'm going to ask for a table. Um, some of this was, you know, uh, um, Lacey was as uh, was out sick today, and, and and some of the things here. This one is uh, we haven't gotten the traffic study yet regarding the Panda Express and Chipotle Drive, so there can really not be a discussion of potential action. So I'd like to have uh, somebody give a motion to table this. I move to table that motion. Second. Any? any uh, uh, well, I got to call for the vote. Once we get that. All in favor? Passes 7 0. Discussion and update on 18410 Kingstown Court. You want me? Please, I can jump into. Yeah. Fall can too. Yeah, we, we've sent the kind of letter that you send when somebody is, as we perceive it, is slow to move and is not living up to their contractual obligation. We're, we're stretching the timeline here significantly. And we gave a very, very strong letter that says, let's, let's get on with it or we're going to have to go to litigation. Um, well, what the response has been and the problem they've had apparently is that they've prepaid this contractor who had not done a good job. They've gotten rid of this current contractor and that's their problem and not ours. If they prepaid it and shouldn't have us, it's their fault. Our position is, and they, and they say they're they've, they're interviewing a brand new contractor and hope to have something pretty quick. So uh, that's that's where we stand. We did get their attention. Yeah, my 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 position was is that they're in default of contract, and we formally had to to let them be aware that uh, they're in default, and now they have to cure that, and it's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be a plan, and I. I, I really appreciate Paul's input about monthly type updates on a, on a defined plan and uh, or or if they don't abide by that, then it's going to be, uh, you know, we're going to have to, you know, bring back the demolition again. And no, no more Mr. Nice Guy. We were to that point. So we, that's what we're we, we already weren't that much of a nice guy. And now now they're in default and uh, they it is their responsibility to cure. Correct. So, OK. But just realize this is heating up, guys. That's that's my my main point here is uh, I want everybody to know they are in default. That it is their responsibility, and uh, this has the potential to be uh, uh, legal. And uh, we'll take it one step at a time. Any questions here? Any comments for, for Dick? Okay. Okay. I am going to uh, nine five is another one which was duplicative that uh, that uh, we are we do we don't need to take action on it's one that we actually did earlier so this is a uh, an error which uh, needs to come off uh, moving to nine six consider and take action uh, do I need to do anything on that council no usually like that. because there um, uh, nine six uh, consider and take action on an ordinance. Uh, 02024-04-15-A, approving the requirements of periodic performance reviews of various city departments provided for a uh, repealer and for severability and providing for codification. This is the first of two readings. To For the citizens, that's a complex way of saying uh, we set out a, a means by which to, uh, to have um, uh, not quite an audit, but but each functional area reviewed uh, once every three years, so two a year, um, so that we can have somebody who's skilled in the different functions come and review operations and be able to give best practices and things like that. The view was is that as a 5,000 person uh, 
uh, city. We don't have the means to be, you know, centers of excellence everywhere. So we want to make sure we have a review so that we uh, we can get that input and implement any gaps that uh, that may come of those. And and particularly something which I think people will will really like is, uh, I mean, this. First of all, this all came out of the charter review, and more than likely, this is going to go to a a uh, a, a um, uh, an election as a resolution for for the charter to be amended, um, a referendum, I guess that's really called. And then, uh, but in the medium, we're in the interim, we're codifying it, but it also requires a citizen survey. So you will get as part of the people coming and looking at things, talking to groups of citizens, doing things along that line so that, that any feedback for the operations, you know, exemplary or terrible or everywhere in between is going to be part of this process, which I, I really like. So uh, citizens will have, a, will have a voice in this also. Um, any, any further questions, any comments? In my opinion, uh, an ordinance needs consequences. And so I'd like to see some consequences and also steps for improvement. So if one of the departments is underperforming, um, what do we do about it? What, how do we help them improve? And so as part of this ordinance, I think um, we need to look at those issues. Thoughts on that, Counselor? Because I mean, I, my, my, in the discussion, is I agree with you in some ways, but if the thing is, is I don't, I can't predict what the magnitude of something's going to be in order to be able to say. Well, we're setting our own rules for our own structure to review our own people. I, I'm not sure you want to put a penalty in there. Well, just yeah. e even like steps for improvement. How do, how, how, how do we help them? Well, isn't that better? part of the process when you get the report back? It'll tell you what, what are the recommendations for improvement. I, that's what I, my, see happening here. Okay. My, my 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 view on this, because I, I, I this is a good 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 topic is is I look at more as gas closure. They're going to show they're going to illustrate areas maybe of of needing improvement or or a best practice, and then they're going to say be, they're going to come up with a recommendation of, of of things that should be done to enhance the hopefully the operation of, of that department, and we either accept that. And we then look at saying how we implement a gap closure to close those recommendations. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, and I think you said it well. I'm hesitant to say a penalty because this is not meant to be disciplinary. This is meant to be continuous improvement. Exactly. And I, 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 I guess I see on some issues it's action that we need to take to help them improve. Like well, maybe, maybe hi hiring another staff person yeah. to help them in an overwhelming office. But the report would bring that to your attention and then that'd be action you'd take as a result of the report. So every time the report comes, we'll have an opportunity. Unless, Perfect. And, and, unless something, and I'm just going to say this, I don't expect, unless something criminal comes out, of right? course. I doubt, and then, right. and then there would be penalties. Right. Right. But, that, but that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be penalties as a result of the ordinance. That would be penalties because of the of the judicial process. Yeah. Or, sure. These are departments within that was a staff matter, which would then have to be discussed in executive session as required by no, all, all, all of the all, all our other rules would apply, correct? So that means it would have to be discussed, correct? Then. Right. Yeah. Executive session. correct. Anything else? Anybody else? How, any? um, how are these which two departments are selected? Like, how is that? It just says Cause it means the city council has to decide that. Oh, okay, we have to decide that. That's our, our responsibility, not staff. Any, anything else? Again, this is the first reading. And, I, and again, this is coming out of the, we are, we are codifying the areas that the Charter Review Committee suggested the amendment of our charter. And same we can't as, do same that as, until we until we get to another election period. And the same is true of nine point seven and nine point eight. They, they are of the all, same, all of the above. Same right. dignity. 
it's a stopgap measure, uh, assuming that something's going to happen with the charter. So this is the first reading. I'm just going to move on. I'm just going to hold it over. I, I, from the comments, it didn't look like there were too many, so we've got that. The next is consider and take action on an ordinance 02024-04-15-B, striking as unenforceable an eligibility requirement for a candidate for the office of mayor or city council, wherein the candidate is prohibited from being in, in uh, arrears in the payments of taxes or other liabilities due to the city providing for a repealer and severability and providing for codification. Again, this is um, tackling a, a ineligibility criteria that is no longer supported and is out of date for the past 10 years or more. I think it's even 15. No, it's, not, it's not legal to, to do, and it still is a relic of our old charter. Of our old charter. And it needs to come out because it's a trap for the unwary. Correct. If you try to follow it, you create you created a situation that's unenforceable. Yep. And believe it or not, this actually was it something happened. that happened. <laughs> so we've got to make sure that there's not people defending the charter as well as uh, not following the, the laws mm -hmm. instead. It's important to pass this one. Yep. Is it, is it, but is it really doing anything if it's in our charter? And yes, it takes it out of the. It, well, it, it, it what it what it does is it, it makes it clear that we're not going to enforce that. It, it keeps us from having the temptation of following the charter when you legally you can't do so. Right. So I, I would I would not worry about that. I mean, I would, obviously, the end goal is to take it out of our charter. That's where we're that's where we're headed. That can't happen immediately. So it this can't. Is the only thing we can't. This do. is the only thing, and, and at least this gets on record. And and if somebody actually asks from reading that, we can show this and say no, that's no longer enforceable. And we're doing our our. <laughs> Correct. Right. Okay. Any any other questions here? Again, this is the first reading. Then I'm going to move on. Moving on to nine. <coughs> Consider and take action on ordinance ordinance. Uh, 02024-04-15-C, approving a non fraternization policy for the city of Nassau Bay, Texas, providing for a repealer and for severability and providing for codification. First of two reasons. Again, this is the same thing and, and <laughs> came out of a, a, a real situation. First reading. First reading. Is this going to be an employment contract as well? Yeah. Can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any, any, uh, I'm, I'm pushing forward, guys. Silence means approval. So yep. I'm, uh, I'm pushing forward. So we'll hold this over for the second reading. And then 9.9, .9, consider and take action to appoint Howard uh, Lavrell as presiding judge for May 4th, 2024 general election. Um, there's, some, there's some issues here on this one. Um, again, with Lacey being out and, and some, not everybody has been put in on this. Uh, I would like to ask for a table. And with this table, I'd also like to say we need to have a special meeting as soon as possible because you know, and I don't know if we want to do it for all of the and just have a special meeting for all the uh, personnel things for committees. But this one is time critical because we have in it, we have uh, early voting coming up. Under under our ordinance, the other positions are filled by the presiding presiding judge, but you don't have to fill the others. The yeah. clerks. So, so yes, yeah, so we and and that and that's where the. Right, right now, what I understand is the alternate judge has, has, has the power. power right now, but we need to have we need to have this for some other things listed, and it, this isn't a full activity of what we need to do, and we shouldn't be limited just to this. So to uh, that, to one individual. I'll move the table. Yeah, move the table. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Lucy. All those in favor? Passes seven nothing, but at the know. same time Sorry. we need to do a special Sorry, oh excuse me i thought i saw your hand yeah. so it'd be six nothing uh with one abstention All right. 
Okay. Wouldn't that worry me having a special meeting? We, it, I, I, you know, if we if we posted it tomorrow, the earliest would be Friday, right? Uh, I think so. I have to confirm, please. You available Friday? Come, I'm out of town Friday. Yeah. I would say we do it Friday. Any, any, any part of me? Me, seventy-two hours. Yeah. Otherwise, we can't do it, and I think we need to be done before the end of the week. Any, any times not working for people on the. During the work day. During the work day. Six o'clock. I mean, with with no objections, it was that unanimous consent for six mm -hmm. o'clock. <laughs> on the calendar. <laughs> you got that ball. Yes. <laughs> right. That's the nineteenth. And 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 what I what I would suggest in the essence of time tonight, since something since it is still tax and a birthday. For, for things, I would I would like to do that for all personnel things here. Just make it a personnel, you know. Uh, uh, meeting. I moved to table uh, section ten new business um, and have that included in the special So so nine one and nine and or excuse me ten one and ten two. Uh, yes, for personnel. Yep, correct. Oh, I see. <laughs> do I hear a second? Wait, 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 wait. We're moving the. We're so moving we're going to move nine nine. 10 1 and 10 2 all during this special things so we'll have it all three together you weren't talking about the clerks to begin with you were talking about these no the clerks will be done by the the judges i agree my understanding uh, mine too are those personnel matters that we're going to move no that's not I mean, the, the membership yeah. membership open seats okay just do it all at once Gives me more time to work on my bed. Yeah, I don't think so, yeah. so I don't think she's you know mentioned what I hear a motion. Do I hear a second? I'll second. <clears throat> Seconded by Paula. Um, all those in favor? Seven nothing. All right. This one here, ten three discussion and action to establish a marine safety work workshop date um one one of the things here i mentioned is i think as we have our summer season coming into play for marine recreation and since we are a waterfront community i uh, i want us to uh, review everything from signage to our ordinances to any other restrictive you know things that we may or may not want um, and uh, I think it's very important to have both the uh, the uh, fire department and the police department represented here because those are the guys going to be front line. <clears throat> I'm hearing uh, from those guys here. I, uh, a little bird spoke into my ear uh, for May 2nd at 6 p.m. Would that work for folks for uh, for a uh, Marine Safety Workshop. Mr. Mayor, I, I, I have been invited by the uh, Harris County Judicial System to sit on a uh, jury. So if I'm not selected, I'm more than happy to do that. Okay. Rod, you were saying? I thought you said it was the 5th. May 2nd. Oh, I thought you said May 5th. They said Sunday. No, I meant the 7th. Sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's why that's why we. <laughs> yeah, that's a Thursday. The first? No, there's another. There's another meeting on the first. I will not be here on the second. The first is an issue for me. The other meeting. I I actually, you know, any let me let me. Chief, Tom, any time during the week of the sixth, any any time there that can work. I'll be out for the beginning of that week, the 29th or the 30th of May. We have early voting going on. So the first, second, and third were in between early voting and election day. I would, I would like to cordially invite everyone to. 
the 16th of the safety day tomorrow. And we can talk about water safety then. Um, so you're out till the you're out the sixth through the tenth. You're out the ninth through the the twentieth. So I'm trying to. I'd like to get this done so whatever comes out of it, we can look at implementing for prior to Memorial Day. Can we implement it quick enough, guys? If we put together for signage and stuff like. That? How long do you expect this to change city ordinance? I'm sure we will. You know. How long do we expect this one kind of thing? I I have to believe going over the things is going to take at least an hour and a half. Because I because I I, I certainly want to have um, you know the homeowners who live on the water and people in the Nassau Bay Marina who. Who, uh, um, you know, use those slips as to be invited so that people can participate. So we can add it to the night sure Can we add? Can we? Can we really? First reading. I don't know if we can get people if we can publicize it fast enough. Okay. May third. May third. What? I'll be out of town, but I can zoom in. Yeah, I think it's fair yeah. to zoom in. When are you out of town? Um, the fifth. So fifth you're leaving I'm then. Good to, I'm good the third. The third? Sure. The third? Then let's let's do it May third. Okay. That that will be first. Right? You cannot. Okay. Can you zoom in at any? Probably not. You mind if we go forward? No problem. Okay. So, um, wait, the second was a problem because Ron. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah, we, we would be meeting in the same offices at the same time. They're at six o'clock on the second. I'm, I'm sure there's going to be come from there a first reading and then we're going to have to do everything. There's going to be more than one one opportunity here. Personal opinion. Because I, I mean, things are going to have to come down as do we want to implement some no wake zones in our, our neighborhood? <laughs> right? There's going to be some things that are going to be <laughs> You know, we got to think through and hear from the citizens what, what they need. Okay. Can we go any earlier than 6 p.m. on the third or five, or is that just you? I, I, I can do it. I can do it that day. What's that day? What's so day? she's wanting to say before six o'clock. Do a five o'clock. Yeah, they, they they would say even before yeah, in the afternoon. Good, <laughs> yeah, so they, they would. I mean, <laughs> staff would probably want to do it, you know, to be done by five because they're all they're they're done after the you know. Well, how, how about this? We'll let's we'll target the third. I'll float some times and we'll see what people can do. That's right? first reading. Uh, no, that would be the workshop, and whatever comes out of that would have to go to first reading. There's no way we're going to codify the objectives of what we want to do. Okay, so then we'd have to have first and second reading. Yeah, so that, that so that would mean on the 13th would be your first reading. Okay, gotcha. You want that set? Yeah. And we'll just miss it for things unless there's some things we can do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. We're planning on the third. The third, May third. Yes. Okay. That uh, that finishes the new business, and we move into executive session. It is <coughs> executive session. It's uh, agenda items eleven point one, which is five five one point zero seven six security personnel or devices M six security risks and recommendations. 11.2, which is 551.074, personnel matters, city secretary discussion with clear, 
clear career professionals is the headhunter 11.3 discussions regarding 2430 Baycrest and 11. which, which is under 55 551071 which is under 551.074 and is the same thing is that 076 071 what you have about Baycrest that's consultation with attorney so is that 551.074 no 071 071 discussion regarding 2430 bank and, and then the flock system is part of the one the earlier security one so that would be 551.076 correct so and then 551.076 flock system update Time. it is nine o'clock okay I don't know. Why. Oh, it ought to all be. You can say this was kind of a trick. This, is, see if I need this one needed some work. Yeah. It was, it was, it was sent out before it's. You got any time tomorrow? That's all right. That's a good job. Okay. I'm going. Okay. Are you changing? Yeah. Do I? Oh, Johnson, I talked to you on the phone. Kent Myers. Yeah, Kent. Oh, good to see you. Good, good. Yeah, 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 good.
Okay, we are. Now this. Now the no. Do the camera down below. They're right next to the pump. There you go. There. there we are. All right. Okay. Are we are we good? You're live. Yep. So I'm coming out of uh, executive session. It is 11:34, and we are now in open session. I wait. Wait a minute. I want to. We have no. We are going to suspend. We have no action on 12:1, 12:2, 13:2, or 13:3. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion adjourn. Seconded by Chase. All those in favor? Let's get out of here, guys. <laughs> Thanks. Yes. Okay. Oh my God.